A big hello to you, it's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcome you up here to Weir Yard. Now, I've been really, really ill and you'll probably tell that by my voice. So it's really kind of impacted some of the videos that we had planned. But one of the things that I've not done for a very long time is actually do a pickups video. So today's video is going to be our January pickups and it's all the bits and pieces that uh, we've uh, had here at Weir Yard over the last month. Now I have tried to rein in my spending but as you remember from last week's bargain video there's a lot of great buys out there and I really just couldn't resist with a couple of things and there was one brand new must-have item that came through from Hornby uh, pretty much just at the end of last year so this squeaks in to our January pickups on account of it being bought with uh, lots and lots of Christmas money that I was very, very lucky to get from relatives. We also had sent in a locomotive from a longtime Monday clubber, Tim Krinsky, and it's incredibly generous of Tim. So I've got a little bit about that on the end of the video as well. So really, really humbled by your generosity. But without further ado, let's get on and see just what it is that I've been picking up over the last month here at Weir Yard Towers. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. It's one of those things with railway modelling that it's very easy to hoard lots and lots of stuff. And, you know, if these shelves behind me have anything to show, it's that I'm very much a hoarder. But there's always room in every collection for that certain something. And I know a lot of people do ask me, what do I pick up that maybe doesn't go for a full on review and maybe is something that I've bought more for me than for the YouTube channel. So come with me and we're going to be taking a good close look at just what it is. I've picked up throughout January but before we do I'd like to ask a huge favour and ask you to hit that like button, share the video to social media and consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell if you haven't already done so. So come with me and let's take a look at January's pickups. <laughs> It's been a long time since we did a pickups video here on the channel and part of that is because I've been trying to cut back what I've been buying. Um, I, I just have quite a lot of stuff um, but there are always one or two things that turn up and you think actually uh, I really want that. So one of the first things which um, I picked up this year was actually another A4 and I, I got this second hand. This is Dominion of Canada in BR Green Lake Crest and uh, it's not in the box because I've been playing with it but this came second hand from Rails of Sheffield and here it is. Now uh, Hornby have just recently released the Great Gathering version of this but I actually quite like um, the uh, some of the uh, Backman models as long as you don't go for the split chassis versions and uh, I have in a previous video actually showed how to tell them apart um, but essentially if the box says it's the DCC ready one then that's uh, okay although it's pretty much the same body molding I think it's been tweaked the way it sits on the chassis uh, we do have the differences in terms of uh, we've got this Katazi, Katozi, Katazi style uh, rear 
uh, axle here on the pony truck rather than the huge air gap that used to plague these. We've got uh, decent valve gear, decent wheels, and then we've got the centrally sprung front bogey. So it is a much improved model. And we've also got that extra decoration in there. So actually, I think these do hold their own. And um, compared with the prices that some of the brand new models are going for, I thought that actually it wasn't too bad. Um, so finally being able to add Dominion of Canada number 60010 to my collection courtesy of this so i, I do have a thing for a4s and <laughs> does it show um i think i think it's 24 23 24 that i've got now and part of the reason for that if you've been keeping count is because um pretty much around the same time that i picked that up I also uh, went and uh, got myself one of these. This is the all-new Hornby Golden Fleece. Now, Golden Fleece has never had a release in a high-fidelity model. It has been out before in a previous rendition with the, um, I always think, that awful tender drive model uh, that Hornby previously did, I think pre-2004. But 2004 is my cut-off at the point that uh, they re-released the A4 with a flagship model that had the DCC decoder socket in the locomotive originally, it then moved to the tender. And now we've gone full 21 pin finally as well. But Golden Fleece was one of the A4s that uh, Hornby Double O uh, did back in the day. So it's like the holy, um, it's not a trinity, what's four? Qu quadrilogy or something like that of Sir Nigel Gresley, Silver King, Golden Fleece and Mallard, which were the Hornby Double O models. I've now got them all, which is really, really quite pleasing to me. And this is the latest main range release from Hornby. We've got all of the um, the history of uh, the model on the back. And I think that Hornby have missed a trick not mentioning its um, appearance in the Hornby Double O range. The reason why this is proving a very popular model. Now, again, I could not resist myself. So... I actually went and uh, I've been playing with it. So we've got here Golden Fleece, and it is a lovely model. Um, and the, the Hornby model is definitely better than the Bankman model, but the Bankman model does hold its own, it must be said. Um, now we do have these posable uh, roof vents, which is always an interesting touch. Uh, they're modeled just as fixed in place on the uh, Bankman one, but certainly, this is a lovely model. It's actually a little bit lighter than the Backman one. Um, it has struck me, but we've still got the same finesse with that centrally sprung front bogey. Everything about this really, really nice. Although I did have a few little difficulties. I actually had to send my first one back um, because the uh, motor cradle had um, a defect which meant that it wouldn't go in reverse or at least the motor would but the, the model would not uh, move in reverse it just make a high-pitched screaming sound of the motor free running which uh, wasn't great now this is the first release of the a4 with this new tender and locomotive coupling and i've read online uh, quite a few people reporting that they've had issues that they are quite fragile and um, whilst they are designed to be unplugged and plugged back together um, i've chosen I, i'm just not going to do it i'm going to leave it be it works it's fine um, it can live on a shelf like this I, I am not going to mess about with it and i think that that is the prudent way it's not my favorite i think that um hornby uh, really should have done things a little bit differently uh, than that. Um, you know, can't give them uh, a knock for trying, but I don't think that that is a, a great design, and I think we may see some improvements over time. And for me, actually, the models with the permanent drawbar that's screwed at either end, and then the cable that goes across, I think that that is something that... Um, really actually they should have just stuck with would be my opinion now it does feature firebox flicker but i'm very disappointed to see that you can't control it from dcc uh, it's not on on uh, any of the auxiliary functions when the track powers live 
the firebox is flickering in this model and I would implore Hornby to um, fix that on later releases. You know, open goal here, you can make that a controllable function. It doesn't mean you can then turn it off. These things would not have run with the firebox doors open all the time. It's just not how they work. But there we go. And what is interesting is that it does feature uh, the tender chassis, which is the same tender chassis that they used in this model from quite some time ago. Uh, this is Sir Ronald Matthews uh, 6001. And uh, very unusual one. I think this is the only time Sir Ronald Matthews has ever been released ready to run in a high fidelity model from any of the, uh, the manufacturers, as far as I'm aware. And uh, just going to turn her over, we've got that drawbar uh, when it, it wasn't fixed at the tender end, just on the pin with the plug across there. But um, uh, it's nice to see that Hornby dug out the tooling for this, which had a 21 pin chassis out of necessity. Of the fact that it took the ESU lock sound decoder that they bought those in before they went down their very own uh, TTS route and went back to the 8 pin they're now moving back to 21 pin I think that that's actually a pretty good move now you might remember I did the bargain hunt video last week it was actually meant to be the Friday video and this video was meant to be the Wednesday video but because of severe illness it just hasn't worked out that way um, and one of the models that I featured in that bargain crawl was actually this. So I did jokingly say, you know, if it's not there, then that's probably because I've, I've gone out and bought it. But um, yeah, I did actually. Um, so this is secondhand from Rails of Sheffield. You can see there on the end. Uh, it was actually listed at cheaper than that. So some of these, um, the price stickers on it uh, are... Um, sometimes actually more than what you're paying for the item so I wouldn't uh, look at that and go oh that's a bit expensive I, it, it's not uh, I think they were doing it for I can't remember is it 69 pounds and it is DCC ready I did say in that video they missed a trick by not mentioning that and because they didn't show the box you couldn't see that and I think that was harming its sales potential so again I've already got it out of the box and uh, been having a play about with it. So here it is. So we can actually compare this like for like with the uh, one that was in the listing um, because this is the locomotive from the listing. Although um, they did tell me actually they had two. So there was two available on the one listing. So it didn't actually go as out of stock after I bought it, which I found quite peculiar. And then they explained to me, oh, actually, there's two of them. So this is one of the earliest super detail Hornby models and the Fowler 264 tank has been in the Hornby range since I think the 70s, or certainly the 80s. But this is fully retooled. I think they retooled this uh, either late 1990s or I suspect early 2000s. So whilst there's been a Fowler 264 tank in the range, this is not that model. And that means that we've got a, a, a modern spec chassis and the tooling on the body as well is actually not too bad. Um, it's got a front number plate, but no number on it. And I don't know whether that's a previous owner's been messing about, but um, I did spot that. We do have the shed code plate of 9A. Um, I did find a list online which showed me what all of the shed codes were, but I uh, couldn't for the life of me tell you what uh, 9A is. Somebody's probably already typing it in the comments. Now we've got fully sprung buffers on this, and it just shows this is from that era. So... I think people get put off these because they think of those old toy-like models, and this isn't one of those. We've got a centrally sprung rear bogey, uh, which is a bit of a nuisance, actually. It keeps getting jammed sideways. And uh, we've got an 8-pin decoder socket in this. But this model did take a lot of servicing to get running. It was billed as being a, a runner, but when it arrived, the grease in the drivetrain was absolutely solid. 
and um, had to clean that out. I re-lubricated it, that didn't fix things. So I cleaned it all out with IPA, re-lubricated it again fresh, did a lot of running on the rolling road, and then uh, it, it it still doesn't run 100%. Um, I think it's led a hard life, um, but it does now run, and I've just managed, just before I started recording this video, to get it to run on DCC with the decoder in. As you can see, the running on this model is incredibly poor. Uh, there's also, when it does run, a little bit of a clicking sound, and quite frankly, I think it's got split gears. And on DCC, as you can see, it's pretty much unusable. And it's a shame, because it's quite a nice model to look at, certainly really well detailed. But mechanically, this model is pretty much unusable, and uh, it is a shame. Uh, for a second-hand item to have uh, got through the shop's quality control in this way. But uh, one thing I wanted to show you is it's very early DCC Ready Hornby model. This is the blanking plug that was in it. I've uh, never seen one of these before, so I just assumed that Hornby very quickly moved away from that, but I thought it was quite a peculiar little blanking plug. So there we are. Um, these are the locomotives that I picked up. Now, a lot of people have also asked me just what it is that I bought from Hatton's uh, with the closing down sale. And I, I have mentioned before, uh, I got myself a couple of these. The price was so good, I just couldn't miss them. And it was interesting, actually. They were listing about 120 of these, the 21-pin uh, guys, when I placed the order. When I'd finished paying for the order and I went back in and just was started browsing around, I noticed they dropped to about 80. So these sold incredibly quickly in the Hatton's closing down sale. They also had next 18, but no 8-pin, and they also didn't have any of the uh, power banks, um, which have become like gold dust. But luckily... I was able to source some of these from Arcadia Models. Uh, good old Tim had um, a number of these actually in stock, uh, but they were just, these are out of stock everywhere. Now, there is another batch coming through from Hornby, um, but uh, I was able to actually get three of these, and they did have more as well. They're probably sold by now, um, but really, really useful. And um, one of the things which I've been working on with the world of TXS is um, fitting a V1, V3 tank from Backman. So I've got my Backman V1, V3 tank. Now, um, I had struggled to find out what on earth was the difference between a V1 and a V3. And it, it turns out it seems to be just boiler pressure. And that's one of the reasons that Backman can do both the V1 and V3, essentially, from the same tooling, because outwardly, I guess, they look the same. So I'm not sure whether this is a V1 or a V3. Um, but uh, one of the people on the Hornby beta testing group for the TXS system commented that they'd been able to get TXS uh, decoder into one of these, uh, which is a Next18 socket. And uh, it was just, uh, it piqued my interest. One of the things that was told untruthfully, really, about the TXS decoders by some people online was that, oh, the next 18 won't fit anything. And I did set out to prove that that just was not true. And uh, I got the next 18 decoder to fit in quite a few different locomotives. Um, but at the time, I didn't have one of these. And so when one of the beta testers said, oh, yeah, I've managed to get it in and explained how... I really wanted to um, have a go, so I've done just that. And actually, I'm going to share with you exactly how that's worked out. So these go together quite easily, actually. We've got a single screw there. And I also, I did put a power bank in here. One of the three that I got from uh, good old Tim at Arcadia has ended up in this model. Now, I just have to be a little bit careful because, there we go. Right, first of all, power bank right down in there uh, i've used a bit of double-sided sticky pad to just stick it right up into the top of the bunker used all of the uh, cable just to um, bring it down to where the uh, decoder is now the daughter board here has been unscrewed from the lugs uh, because if you leave it screwed in 
this is just too wide, you can't get it in. So by doing that, this is free floating and can kind of move to fit inside here. The speaker is over here and I've used not the smallest, but the second smallest of the cube style enclosures. Um, and I've used some captain tape just to hold it all in place. And that is really quite neat. I'm guessing from the little clips that Backman give you above the motor, that this is where they intend you to put things like the um, uh, speakers if you do a sound conversion, because they've given you uh, actually quite a nice, helpful wiring run. Then at the back of the model, just down in there, I fed this wire down underneath this piece here, just unscrew it, get the uh, wire into the wiring run so it doesn't get caught up in any of this area. And then there's just enough wire for it to come round up and plug into the decoder. So we've got full sound and stay alive all together here with the next 18 decoder, the decoder is not modified, and the only modification to the locomotive is undoing two screws to let this daughter board move freely. And that makes this actually, um, ironically, one of the easiest of the next 18 conversions. So um, I've been really impressed with that. Uh, so a big, big thank you to uh, one of the guys from Hornby who uh, had uh, done that and just shared with us. Uh, just how we'd gone about doing it. So getting it in uh, all back together is just simply a case of uh, just working that uh, daughter board with the decoder on into there. Then we need to hook it in at the front and then very carefully just drop it down and in. The screw goes back down and because all those wires are in that wiring run, don't have to worry about that screw chewing anything. And it's as simple as that. So power bank, Bluetooth decoder and the speaker all in place neatly inside this model. And uh, didn't even need to take the plugs off the decoder. Um, it really is actually one of those models that once you realise it all fits, it simply would be rude not to equip one of these models with the Bluetooth decoder. So um, there you have it. That's um, one little nice project, which I was really pleased, worked out just fine. Final couple of items that have come in for review from 247 Developments. And uh, these are 3D printed uh, kits, actually really quite heavy. And I'm actually, I'm assuming they're 3D printed. Uh, but looking at that, they're really quite sharp fidelity. So let's get these out of the bags. And a huge thank you to uh, uh, 247 Development for sending these over. I do feel quite bad that I've just been so, so ill that uh, we've just not been able to do anything. Now, they do require, I think it does say on here, uh, Freelance Bogey Tank Wagon, this is K46 in their catalogue, requires one pair of Pico GR106 bogies to complete, um, and they are actually quite quite easy to get hold of. And uh, that's, see so we've got the tanker in two halves, and they've got lugs on actually, which makes things a lot easier, so uh, you can't accidentally get these the wrong way round. That's two holes, that's a hole and a pole. And uh, let's just see what else we've got. There's a lot of metal work in here as well for the railings. Uh, we've got the filler cap that looks to be, that actually looks a white metal part, it's quite nice. Then we've got the ends of the tanks. And these look really quite sharp and nice. Uh, so final piece here. So the chassis and the tanker, these look like, there we go, yeah, so the pole and the hole, and they actually fit together really quite smoothly. And um, there's not too much in the way of stratification. That's quite uh, quite a big bogey tanker there. So we've got the mounting points below. These are where you'd put the bogies into place. And uh, just simply a case of, um, I'd spray this up with uh, probably a plastic primer. After you glue it together, Give it a quick clean, probably hot soapy water, blast over with grey plastic primer and uh, actually it's quite a simple way of building up a, a wagon. Um, we've got a kit price there of £12, all you need to add to that are the bogies 
and that actually fits together really quite well and you can see there on the top that's where the filler would go down and in so not um, a difficult kit at all. Then the second one that they've sent over is the Talithan Railway style gunpowder wagon. It says gunpower. <laughs> it has a gunpowder wagon body. Use Pico N gauge 10 foot chassis. And this is a uh, kit K45, five pounds. And uh, so this is a one piece uh, thing there. So we've got the mounting holes for the chassis, which you just glue on. And um, we've got some quite nice detail. It looks like the Sax Assault style wagons. So that's really great. Again, from 247 Developments, uh, this is, uh, I'm just, just having a look actually, there's a, a different brand name on the, the card there. So this is uh, Dulice Valley Models 3D printed bodies. Um, and these are being handled through 247 Developments. When I'm feeling better, I'm going to tackle these and you'll see these up and running on Manith Tatter. So a big thank you for sending those in. And that's all I've got time for you, really. It's um, uh, a little bit of a thin pickings through January. But in all honesty, um, you can buy too much. And, uh, you know, we've been hit with the news of Hatton's uh, shutting down. Uh, Warley at the NEC is no more. But actually the hobby is really, really buoyant. When you talk to some of the other retailers, uh, like Rails, TMC, the Model Centre, uh, Arcadia Models, and a lot of others, uh, Great Eastern Models as well, um, actually the story is much, much rosier. And it's why we, we probably as a community got quite angry when the BBC decided it would uh, jump on the bandwagon. They're like, oh yeah, bad news, Schadenfreude. And, uh, you know, they don't care about um, uh, our hobby. They don't care about um, the uh, companies that are here. It's just some clickbaity story that they could push out and move on, leaving uh, it all trailing in, uh, crashing and burning in their wake. But we're not going to let them do that. So there we have it, still very buoyant. We've got lots of main range items. We've got lots of smaller suppliers as well doing very, very well. So I'm just really pleased actually to see how well the hobby is growing. We're getting some great innovations as well with uh, a lot of things like the TXS system. Really is a game changer and it's nice to finally find as well another locomotive that that next 18 version will fit in really really easily. I'd just like to put out a huge thank you to Tim Krinsky who very very kindly and unexpectedly sent this into the channel so thank you so so much for your generosity and it will definitely take pride of place here on Weir Yard. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and it's just a little bit of a shame there at the end that that uh, Fowler 264 tank locomotive just kind of failed under uh, running. Now, when it arrived, it uh, was very, very stiff and uh, a lot of that was just down to, I thought, needing a good service. And it did turn out that the gear chain was just really quite crusty with uh, what I presume was started out as the white grease that was applied at the factory and that has hardened over the years now it's probably a 20 plus year old model so it's it's been in there a long long time and uh, certainly looking at that blanking plate this is a very early DCC ready model so it kind of dates it just a little bit uh, but it really was not the end of the, the drama with getting that to run. After I cleaned it all out, it was very stuttery and it was quite clear that there was a lot of clicking and thrashing around of that centre axle. It's very difficult to actually really capture it on film. Uh, but in person on the rolling road, when I did get it running, the centre axle was twisting and writhing as it ran, along with a rhythmic clicking sound. And this later has turned out on investigation to be a split gear as well. And the pickups too, really, really lacklustre. And it's not really quite clear why. And sometimes you find this with a model where 
there aren't any dry solder joints, there aren't any loose wires, and everything's where it should be, and all the pickup wipers are pressing hard on the backs of wheels, and everything's clean, and it still won't run. And um, over the years, I've had one or two models like this, and this is very much in that camp. I was a little bit disappointed, as you can imagine, because the model was listed as test run and excellent condition. And when it's arrived and I've gone through the process, yes, it looked really, really nice. But in terms of uh, running condition, it's quite clear that a test run would have flagged up that it was seized and it had a split gear and very poor pickup. So just a little bit disappointing with that. But the other items, well, I've got two more A4s for my collection. And you can see that shelf up there. A4s really are my thing. I love the A4 Pacific. I probably should be my favourite locomotive. I've certainly got more of them than any other specific type of locomotive. In fact, even more of them than Gronks. Um, but certainly Dominion of Canada and Golden Fleece. That's the biggie for me. Really pleased to get those. And also huge thank you to Tim Krinsky for sending over that class 08. It arrived unexpectedly and uh, really most welcome. I do love a good Gronk and Tim. That was incredibly generous of you. Um, also quite sad to see the end of Hatton's. Uh, very complicated reasons for all of this. The hobby itself, I firmly believe, is in safe hands and is definitely very buoyant. There's no risk of the hobby just collapsing. It ain't going to happen. And also a huge thank you to 247 Developments who sent over those uh, kits for 009 Freelance rolling stock. And it's certainly a great way of expanding your rolling stock fleet in that scale. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Just what did you think about my pickups? And also, what have you been picking up? Do let me know. It's always great to hear from you. Tickle the like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And until next time, hopefully I'll be feeling a lot better. Take great care of yourself. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.